What's going on guys? It's K-Dub here with another episode of Crypto Zombie. Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Unfortunately, the price of Bitcoin has absolutely crashed. Oh wait guys, this is actually the Netflix chart. Yeah, you guys can see right here, massively insane over 35% crash in just a day. Basically four years have been wiped off the table. So they say that Bitcoin is too volatile, so be careful out there, friends. But no, actually, if we have a look at the Bitcoin chart, which is interesting because Bitcoin, they say, is very correlated to these tech stocks. However, you can actually see that Bitcoin has bounced very nicely off the bottom of these resistances and has even found support on this upward sloping spider line right here. So this is why I said be very cautious about putting in shorts at these levels. We have seen support and we could potentially see Bitcoin heading up to that $44,600 level that I've been talking about. Now stick around, guys, because are the bears about to get wrecked? Because because there is a massive potential Bitcoin catalyst on the horizon. And if this does happen, my friends, we could potentially see ungodly numbers for Bitcoin, 300,000, 400,000, half a million dollars per Bitcoin. I am not kidding, guys. However, with that being said, there was something that came out that has only ever happened once for the first time ever, and it just happened on the Bitcoin chart, and it could signal something very, very scary something that a lot of especially new people in crypto would not be very happy to see Bitcoin do. Is that a possibility? Are you prepared? We need to talk about that, guys. That's what we're going to go over in today's video. However, the tides could be turning for Bitcoin. And that being said, guys, I have a very big announcement. Now, you guys know it sucks if you're in the US. Binance kicked me off over a year ago. I wasn't able to trade all those coins. I had to go over on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, pay ridiculous high Ethereum fees to do these transactions. Well, guys, today I wanted to actually talk about super quick MEXC Global. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because finally there is a place where US citizens can actually trade and they even do up to 10 Bitcoin a day withdrawals with zero KYC. I actually spent an hour talking to the team yesterday. Is this real? Like, is this actually something that US citizens can use? And guys, I actually had an opportunity to partner with them and I highly recommend you take advantage of this. We have 14 days left for this. There is a $25 drop. Obviously, you deposit $100, you do some trading, they airdrop $25. And specifically for Crypto Zombie members only, you can get up to a $1,000 giveaway for a few special users. So definitely make sure you guys check that out. Use the link below in the description if you want to get those bonuses. It is specifically just for Crypto Zombie members. And they also have an extra 1,000 USDT bonus as well if you are looking to trade and I'm like not trying to shill this exchange, guys, but I am extremely impressed with this. They have almost two thousand altcoins uh, projects that you can be trading on over here. So definitely check that out. Take advantage of this, guys. So like I said, in 14 days, this ends. Use the link below in the description. Obviously, you help support the channel, but they also give you 10% reduced fees for life, and they already have some of the lowest fees out there. A lot of these guys are charging 1%, even 2%. They're doing 0.2% over there. So definitely take advantage of that, guys. Check that out. I had to bring that up to you because most of you guys don't stay until the end of the video. Very huge opportunity, 14 days, check that out in the links below. Also, make sure that you guys stick around to the end of this video because I have a few altcoins that I've recently put on my radar lately that I think could actually perform very, very well in the next few months, even throughout the year. So you're gonna wanna stick around for that as well. Thank you again, my friends, and I know why you're here. You wanna talk about the charts. We're gonna talk about the charts, my friends. If you're not subscribed, definitely consider it. But like I said, links below in the description, check the pinned comment. So. We were talking about this. What did we say? We said that this level right here, this upward sloping trend line has been supporting us ever since back here, January 22nd. And I did say that I was expecting a bit of a scam wick to the downside. We might have overshot our uh, prediction a little bit. I was actually thinking we could go down to 36. We actually perfectly stopped out right here where you can see that if you draw the line, okay, this was acting as resistance here. We had a little bit of accumulation sort of resistance as well. And currently look at that perfect bounce off that level. We are entering into this top blue zone here, and I still do have a target of $44,600 for Bitcoin. Now, if you haven't officially entered into the trade yet, 
you know, it's mid trade right now. So I don't really know if you guys want to try to, you know, go for that, you know, extra percentage you can, there is a potential chance we could come down and retest it. That is a possibility, but I still am looking at this zone right here for Bitcoin. Now, if we have a look at these rainbow trends right here, you are noticing that we are approaching the yellow area, which has acted as a very important level of support and resistance as well. That level is sitting at around 43,600. So you could see a little bit of turbulence short term for the Bitcoin price in that area, but I still do have that bullish target. And I told you guys that we could be forming a giant ascending triangle. And even if you took out these trends right here and you just looked at the top and you just looked at the bottom trends, you could also argue that really this is just a giant bull flag that's been forming. And we've been doing one of the largest accumulations for Bitcoin ever. And I would say this, if we do break out of this range, which it's not even a matter of if it's a matter of when you are definitely going to see the price go bananas, my friend. I do believe that we are going to see some crazy price action for Bitcoin. I told you that we had this uh, golden cross over here around April 5th with the 50 moving above the 100. And we did get the dump as soon as we got that. Now, this is very common. These are lagging indicators, right? Because they show you the trend, right? If you're looking at the 50, it's showing you the previous 50 or the 100, the previous 100. So it is a lagging indicator. But historically speaking, this is a very, very good sign for Bitcoin. As you can see, we have now shot above the 100. We've shot above the 50. And the key area that we have to pay attention to right up here is this 200 daily moving average. And you can see right here, we did have that resistance, right? Which you know, rightfully so would be the time that you would want to short because we're approaching it. But if we can get back up to that $48,000 level right here and actually close a daily candle above it, well then guys, I would honestly say that Bitcoin is going to move very high and it can go very high, very fast. You guys have seen this. We have seen massive thousands of dollar daily candles, right? Big, big moves for Bitcoin. And we could finally see that volatility coming to an end. And as we did point out, Bitcoin is essentially following what it usually does on these mid-cycle trends where we have these, you know, two tests down to the previous high on these trend lines. And currently, you could see we've already had our two touches that we tend to do in the past right here, right? We had one, two, putting in that, uh, you know, double bottom here. Back here in 2018, one, two, double bottom on the trend. And the same thing could be forming right now, my friends, with this one, two, double bottom on the trend. So that doesn't say we couldn't come down, maybe back to 34,000 on the macro, right? But ultimately, it does look like Bitcoin is setting up for something massive. And the other thing that we talked about was Bitcoin's inverse relation to the DXY. You can see right here, the DXY is actually getting again rejected at this 100 level. Every single time we break above it, we have a bit of a fake out. We dump, bit of a fake out, we dump. What do you guys think we're doing right now? Do you actually think the dollar is looking as strong as people say it is because the Fed is getting hawkish and all these other things that are floating around? Or do you honestly think that this is just history repeating? Are we gonna have a little bit of resistance here, fake out bounce like we did, and then dump down to like 95 or something like that? I would not be surprised if that happens. And if that does happen, you are going to see Bitcoin have a very, very nice move in correlation or at least the inverse correlation to the dollar. Now, if you've made it this far, congratulations. This is the scary part of the video. Now, you guys might be familiar with a trader, CryptoFace, right? He's actually a friend of mine. Uh, we've hung out on multiple occasions. He's a very good trader, and he's the one behind the market cipher indicator, which I do actually use. I like to use it in strong trends. It helps me to you know, do those longs when you're long in the dip and stuff. Sideways markets can get a little bit tricky. Um, he likes to draw on the charts the same way that I do. But I took this screenshot from his video. I'm not going to play the whole video. It's over a half hour long. I can explain it. Essentially, you know, he was talking about these are the three amigos. If you watch his channel, you know, you know what these are. Um, but ultimately, for the first time ever in Bitcoin's history, we got a blood diamond on the weekly. So this is actually a bearish signal. Now, the reason that you can see these, you know, all these signals up here, they have to do with money flow. There's all different indicators within this indicator, but it's basically something that tries to make it very simple for the average person, right? And you can see right here that he was a little bit concerned about this. So one of the biggest, uh, you know, concerns right now is have we run out of that cash flow, the money flow? Is there not enough? 
enough money flowing into crypto? Is it just the same people that have been in for the past year just switching out of Bitcoin into altcoins and all that volume is just kind of self-contained in this little bubble? That is a big concern. We haven't seen a physical Bitcoin ETF yet in the United States. We are missing out on so much money, so much potential capital, so many big players. And he says, what would happen if we go lower? What happens if we do come down and touch that 200 weekly down around that $21,000 level, which by the time Bitcoin went down to that level, of course, it would be higher. So, you know, he points out maybe something like a $23,000 Bitcoin to a $24,000 Bitcoin, putting in a giant double bottom that leads all the way potentially into next year. And then we get the catalyst. Is it possible? Not trying to talk about manipulation or conspiracies, but what if the U.S. is holding off on this ETF because they know that they want to try to push the price lower? They want to get these better buys, right? They feel like they got left out. And these big timers, these the old money, right, that doesn't want to use Coinbase or anything like that, they're waiting to come in. Because he says that if that does happen, you're talking about a massive catalyst. So while this could be scary on the short term, this is hypothetical. We're not saying we're going to go down to 23, but it is something I wanted to bring up to keep in your minds because you have to be prepared for crazy things to happen in the market. Could you be all right knowing that maybe for the rest of the year we do come down to these levels? Then let's say we do get the big news for the ETF. And at that point, CryptoFace actually went on to talk in his video saying that we could see, you know, 200,000, 300,000, 400,000 Bitcoin uh, price easily because now you have that old money. You have that money that is not going to invest until they have that security of a physically backed Bitcoin ETF. That is something to consider. This is a very scary worst case type scenario, but it still has a silver lining. In fact, he doesn't think that Bitcoin's dead. It's going to die. It's going to go to zero. It's just a what if we go into this before taking off to the upside. I mean, don't forget, you know, you had Bitcoin at $100. It went to $1,000, went all the way down and then came all the way back up to 20 only to retest, uh, retest 3000. Okay. That was an 85% drawdown. And then we went up to 70 thousand dollars so we know where the price of bitcoin is headed but short term could you handle that it is something you need to ask yourself and it's just something i had to bring up just to be a little bit more realistic but Let's talk about why maybe we shouldn't be concerned about that, okay? As you see over here, our technical indicators showing the net accumulation phase in the market represents a clear accumulation phase. So essentially, these are showing that we are mimicking these bottoming type of patterns, right? We could be mimicking these bottom patterns like we've seen in the past right here. And ultimately, they say that a $4,000 Bitcoin in 2020 is almost the same as a $40,000 Bitcoin in 2022. Massive accumulation is happening. And as I did mention this, while all these guys are sitting on the sideline, they're waiting for that institutional adoption, right? We also have a Bitcoin illiquid supply, which is going absolutely parabolic. So that is something we definitely need to pay attention to, right? But I want to keep talking about this Bitcoin catalyst because we saw what had happened over in Australia with the potential or not the potential. They are going to launch a Bitcoin ETF on the 27th. But check this out, guys. The market for crypto exchange traded funds in Australia is becoming more crowded with two spot ETFs from 21 shares set to launch next week, joining an offering from Cosmos Asset Management. 21 shares, which has 2.5 billion in assets under management with 30 global exchange traded products, has partnered with ETF Securities to launch a Bitcoin ETF and an Ethereum ETF as well. So their funds are going to be held in cold storage physically backed coins. This is huge, guys. The fact that it's not paper, they're not betting, it's not futures in the sense of just betting cash settled differences. No, this is real Bitcoin. This is real Ethereum. It is being held and they're using Coinbase as their custodian. This is going to create demand and this is going to cr open the floodgates, right? The introduction of crypto ETFs in Australia prompted criticism of U.S. regulators from Van Eck. Van Eck, we spoke about them. Director Gabor Gabox, who labeled the SEC's conservative stance on listing a Bitcoin ETF as a big loss for investors. Now, let's follow the data. So data from on-chain monitoring resource CoinGlass confirms that as of April 21st, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust is actually rebounding towards 2022 highs. So they say the descent from November's all-time high, uh, you know, put a negative premium on GBTC around negative 30%. Currently, right now, it's negative 21.4%. So it is, in fact, increasing to the upside. You had Grayscale CEO Michael Sunshine 
uh, talking about essentially the regulators in Washington. And he says, while approving futures ETF products, uh, well, while attempting to improve them, they, they keep rejecting spot base, right? So we already have two cash settled, but cash settled doesn't really do anything. Cash settled is you're just taking bets and you're settling them in dollars, right? He says, if the SEC can't look at two like issues, the futures ETF and the spot ETF through the same lens, then it is in fact potentially grounds for an administrative procedure act violation. You also have Matt Hogan, CEO of ETF provider Bitwise saying in an interview that a spot ETF is what the people actually want in terms of institutional investment products. Meanwhile, and listen to this, a survey by NASDAQ of prospective U.S. investors revealed that over 70% of those who were asked would consider gaining exposure to Bitcoin via a spot ETF if it was made available. So you're saying that 70% of these guys are still not gaining exposure because they're not even considering it until the spot Bitcoin ETF actually gets approved. They say the vast majority of advisors we surveyed either plan to begin allocating to crypto or are going to increase their existing allocation to crypto. And as demand continues to surge, advisors will be looking for an institutional solution to the crypto question that now dominates clients' conversations, which is essentially when Bitcoin spot ETF in the US. And getting back to what CryptoFace was saying, are they manipulating it? Are they pushing it down? Are they trying to get it super, super low until we actually launch that spot Bitcoin ETF? I don't have the answers for that, my friends, but I will say that this is going to happen. It's just a matter of when, who knows what their agenda is. It's already happened in Canada. It's already happened multiple places in Europe. It's happening twice now for Australia. It's only a matter of time until the U.S., feels like they're left behind, and it is going to happen, guys, and that is the massively bullish catalyst that is probably the next big thing that's going to happen for Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So that being said, thank you if you made it to this part of the video. Now, I do want to talk about some altcoins, guys, because there are some advantages and opportunities still in these markets. Now, obviously, I don't recommend allocating tons of capital to altcoins. They, re they represent very small positions. You know, Bitcoin is the vast majority of my holdings for crypto with, you know, 5% or so depending on you know how well a coin does allocation of my main portfolio now you guys know that I try to follow these trends and I and I and I look at things and analyze what do we need right now. I told you a few trends in the beginning of the year. This was a video that I put out in May 9th of 2019 where I did an interview with Sandeep Nailwall of Matic. I was extremely bullish on Matic. I remember I went to the conference that year. A lot of people were laughing at me saying, oh, you know, I think you're just emotionally tied to the coin, man. You know, you don't want to get emotionally tied to the coin. Well, guys, I put this interview out on May 9th of 2019. And if we actually go back to the Matic chart, Way before all this happened, let's go back here, let's go back here, May 9th of 2019 was all the way, all the way essentially right here at the very, very, very beginning. Matic was trading literally, let's see what it was actually, May, May 9th, well I can't get it, May 10th, it was trading at 0 .003 cents. And today it's trading at $1.40 or something like that. That was 55,120% ROI, guys. That was an absolutely insane call. Now, there may be, a, now, but, but I want you to remember, this did not happen overnight. We had to hold through a lot of this. But what's interesting is if I actually zoom in, look at this, guys. Uh, let me zoom in a little more. You can actually see that a lot of people had thought that this was the top, right? There was this thing that happened on Binance and, you know, people were worried about this, but Hindsight, you can't even see this on the chart anymore. So the next one that I want to mention, guys, is meter. And the reason that I'm excited about meter is because it gives me the same feelings that I had about Matic back in 2019. It's the same type of concept. They're working with scaling. The future is multi-chain and I believe in the multi-chain future. I mean, we have so many different blockchains. It's not just Ethereum. You have Ethereum, you have Polkadot, you have Solana, you have Binance Chain, right? You have all these different blockchains, Elrond, and they are looking to be compatible with so many of them, layer one and two, hybrid, which is pretty interesting, guys. And yeah, I mean, you can look, I'm not gonna go into all this. You guys can do your own research. I'm not trying to be like a technical channel. I've looked into it. You should look into it as well. I'm not trying to shill what they do. I just think that this is something that could present a lot of opportunity for the crypto space. You can see right here, supported chains already include Ethereum, Meter, Binance, Theta, Avalanche, Moon River, Moonbeam, Polis, Energy Web, Ampleforth, and many, many more to come. So 
Meter could definitely be an, an amazing play, guys. And the reason that I'm bringing this up to you is because currently it's actually down 10% today, which could present a good buying opportunity. But the market cap is only sitting at around 52 million dollars. Now, in comparison, where is Maddox market cap today? Maddox market cap is nine billion. So the potential for meter to grow, and even if it reaches only 10%, right, of what we've seen Matic do, this could be an amazing play. Now, I do want to just offer one little bit of warning, and that is the fact that if we look at the chart down here, it has had a bit of a pump. So I don't want you guys to buy into a level that, you know, you're not comfortable with holding. But the one thing I am going to point out is if you look at this structure, I don't even have to pull this up on the chart right here. This is putting in a giant double bottom, in my opinion. So there could just be like a little bit of a retest back here, but we know how double bottoms tend to play out. So like I said, guys, it just had a run up from around $1.12. It could have a slight pullback, but it could be an amazing opportunity to accumulate meter. And the other reason I wanted to bring this up as well is because it's actually trading over at MEXC Global, which is really awesome because the thing over here is if you actually look at where you can get it right now, you can see that it's on Binance Smart Chain or Theta. A lot of people really don't use Theta, not saying it's a bad you know, project. I just don't know that many people that are using it. A lot more people are familiar with Binance, but if you wanna go over and just get it on the exchange right now, you don't have to worry about setting up a wallet, doing all this stuff. So they do have this over at MXC Global, which is again why I brought it up and why I'm telling you guys that I am doing this. I I'm going to be trading a lot over on MEXC. Like I said, very US friendly, up to 10 Bitcoin withdrawals. That's unheard of. Most guys do like one Bitcoin. Binance does like 0 0.06 or some crazy number like that. No KYC, 10 Bitcoin. And if you want to get involved in that giveaway, definitely check it out below, guys. Like I said, I talked to these guys for an hour yesterday. I'm very impressed with what they're doing. It has the crypto zombie seal of approval. It's not a scam, uh, you know, exchange or anything like that. These guys are very legit. And finally... Finally, there's a place you can go without having to play, uh, you know, pay these ridiculous fees essentially to trade decentralized, which I, I do prefer trading decentralized, truly, honestly, but I hate the fees. So this is definitely the place to go. Also, 10% discount for life if you use the link below in the description. And not to mention the fact, just throwing it out there, the MX token, which is the token being used on this exchange, which not a lot of people are talking about or paying attention to right now, is down here at around a $252 million market cap. Now compare that to the Binance token. We've seen the use case of the BNB coin. Obviously, they have a lot more use cases currently, but originally, if you remember, it essentially was just an exchange token for getting 50% discount on fees. MX token is gonna have a lot of utility as well. $252 million market cap. Binance is sitting at around 70 billion, I believe. Risk versus reward, guys. Don't buy anything because I talked about it. I don't want to hear you bought these tokens and you lost money because you panic sold. Don't do anything because I talk about it. I'm just trying to share some alpha with you guys here. And these are coins that I'm looking at. And the other one that I wanted to mention too is Stratus. Now, the reason that I'm bringing this up is because we've seen a lot of other tokens trying to do these file, a oh, file coin, for example, decentralized storage. We've seen that before, things of that nature. But essentially, these guys are doing it as well. But one of the big kickers here about what they're doing, you know, for storage, database, computing, and blockchain is that they are taking a layer zero approach. It's a layer zero infrastructure project, which contains blockchain, decentralized storage, decentralized database, decentralized computation. And I told you guys in my video when I talked about, you know, how, how to become a millionaire, millionaire projects in 2022 – Layer zeros were something that I was going to keep my eye on for the remainder of this year, and they are doing that. They're going to build solid infrastructure for the blockchain industry. They're offering, like I said, storage, database, all that other ones, and users and developers can combine the four different services together. So, I mean, just think about cloud storage, you know, centralized but now you're moving into the decentralized realm. They also use this interesting proof of traffic incentive model. So they talk about, you know, Google and Netflix not relying on storage to obtain users, but, you know, through ad revenue, et cetera. So that's why they're using the proof of traffic. But just definitely check this out, guys. Like I said, the other thing is Binzu. So, you know, I like to look at the team and this guy has over 20 years experience in software development, former cloud department founder of MindGeek, I think a lot of you have heard about that and co-founder of Fame Data. So this one is even lower. 
down about 4.4% today, sitting at a $31 million market cap. And you know, if we come down here and essentially have a look at this, this is kind of very similar to what Matic looked like. Remember, I, let me see if I can pull up the Matic chart back there. Um, you see this thing back here that Matic was doing, right? Where it had this crazy pump and then this dump and a lot of people, they were worried about Matic. They thought this was over. You know, this happened back in December of 2019. The price of Matic was 0 0.04 cents. It was four cents. So look at this. We're having a very similar where you have that hype, you know, sort of, you know, pump for Stratus. It dumps. Everyone thinks it's over. We're coming down a little bit lower, but the same way that we did that down here, even though it was a little bit rough, you know, I'm not saying these are gains you're going to make overnight, but it could be a very good opportunity. So that's also why I wanted to bring you guys Stratus. Um, this one you can get over on Uniswap if you are interested. And I also just wanted to mention super quick that Ethium is going to be listing on Myair Dex. I was very excited about this if you were following me over on Twitter. I'm very pumped. You know, I've been supporting Elrond for a while and I'm really excited to see the Myair Dex really start to take off. So keep your eyes on Ethium as well, guys. Now, Getting back to the crypto content of the day, I did want to talk a little bit more about Bitcoin, but every once in a while, got to throw those altcoins in there, guys. So banking institutions are facing increased demand from clients to offer crypto-related services and investments in a safe and regulated way. One of the banks that has taken its steps introducing uh, digital asset-related services is German-based Commerce Bank, which has announced an application for the country's Boffin license for a crypto custody business. So uh, Commerce Bank provides services to nearly 28,000 corporate client groups and close to 11 million private and entrepreneurial clients in Germany. They intend to offer the planned crypto custody services to primarily institutional clients. Banks around the world are increasingly showing interest in expanding their services to cryptocurrencies, and one of them is the banking giant Goldman Sachs, which plans to launch crypto services for its high net worth clients in the second quarter of 2022. So is the second quarter where we really need to be, you know, focusing our eyes on. We know all these guys are in bed with each other. They whisper to each other. They talk to each other. They could know something that we don't. Is that ETF right around the corner? Well, I had a story here. Actually, I was going to bring up about the IMF. Kind of don't really feel like going into it now that I realize it doesn't really flow with today's video, but essentially... They are kind of starting to come around to Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So, you know, they used to be against it. Now they're kind of dipping their toes, getting a little neutral, understanding that we have to regulate it. So that was basically the juice of that story. But I want to end on this. So according to Morgan Stanley, they say few people use cryptocurrency to pay for everyday goods because transaction fees are high and merchants don't accept crypto in payment. But that is changing. So we had that announcement from Jack Maulers talking about Strike, talking about how you can use the Lightning Network, which, by the way, you don't have to just use use Strike. It's open source. You can use it on any platform you want. Well, they recently had a partnership with a uh, point of sale supplier, NCR and payments firm Blackhawk. So they're saying a large number of US stores and restaurants may soon start to accept Bitcoin as payments. They say that partnerships with physical stores are extremely important since this is a crazy high number. Apparently over 85% of sales in the US occur in shops rather than online. And the fee to send Bitcoin on Lightning Network is close to zero, which makes it extremely practical and could push that into the future. So that is it, guys. I wanted to end on that note. Like I said, guys, we are probably going to see a little bit of resistance here at this spider line on the rainbow chart. I do still think we're going up to 44,600. You did make an amazing trade. If you did get in on that trade, guys, we actually have over $16,000 worth of bonuses now. More bonuses than usual if you check out the MEXC, also Bybit and Femex, as well as a $7,000 bonus now over on Prime XBT. We're going to talk a little bit about Prime XBT too. If you want to look to trade traditional stuff, we'll get into that as well. But like I said, guys, you know, they have over like, two, this is just incredible. Over 2000 uh, different coins. I highly suggest you get that thousand dollar bonus waiting to be discovered. Thousand dollar giveaway for five lucky winners and $25 for bonus uh, deposits of a hundred dollars. Guys get in on this. I think MEXC could be big. I'm also keeping an eye on the MX token, right? Could, could potentially see some nice moves, uh, you know, in, in, in the coming year or so. And uh, yeah, check that link below in the description, guys. So thank you so much again for all of your support. You guys rock. You're the reason that I make these videos. Stay safe out there. Always be ready for the bull scenario and the bear scenario. Right now, I'm feeling pretty bullish. What would be really bullish is getting above that 200 daily, above that uh, $48,000 level for Bitcoin, but we will keep our eyes on it. So thanks again. I love you guys. You're awesome. You're the reason that I make these videos. And uh, yeah, that's
that's basically it for me today. So thank you for coming back to the channel. If you do want to learn how to trade responsibly and profitably, watch these videos popping up right here, right now. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.